Recall that during the month of September, Make Noise is doing a pop up over at 821 Haywood here in West Asheville. Most of the instruments that Pete and I use to make videos are hanging out over there for people to try out. So when I come in to shoot, it's just me and the original shared system. The shared system was first created for the express purpose of making records. The shared system series consists of five seven inch records that were all recorded using this very synth right here in front of me. It was mailed from one artist to the next, and they made their records using only the shared system, with the option of adding reverb. If you're familiar with the modern black and gold plus version of the shared system, you know it includes an herb verb. But in 2012, that was still two years away from release. At the time, Make Noise founder Tony Rolando stated that reverb was such an integral part of electronic music that it felt like a bridge too far to forbid it. I'd also note that while single system recordings have become more common over the last decade, it was a pretty unusual way to make a record at that time. And so it was hoped that being limited to one small instrument would bring out the individual voices of the artists, as all other variables were removed. This would give a shine to both the artists in their individual sound and the synthesizer in its versatility. You might notice that this system does not include every module that Make Noise made at the time. A very noticeable exclusion is brains, which turns pressure points into a four-step sequencer. About this decision, Tony said that he wanted at least one portion of the system for the record series to demand manual playing. 
It's very possible to make self-playing and generative music with this system, but the pressure points has no inputs other than the physical touch of the performer. So if you want to use every module in the system, you're required to play it in some way. One thing that astonishes me about this system when I look at it is that even though Tony says he was not originally conceiving of it as a complete product that would be sold as a unit, it's very clear that the design of the individual modules, which were developed separately over a period of about four years, it's heavily oriented around their placement within the system. The pressure points and Rene have all their outputs at the top to allow easy access to the plates by the synthesis's fingers. We can see that the row of modulation inputs along the bottom of DPO and Echophone are made with these outputs in mind. You can patch these connections with shorter cables and without the cables crossing any knobs. Even the woggle bug is oriented so that its outputs shoot out the right side and we have easy access to the clock knob on the left side at the edge of the case. The standard clock knob was actually the medium blue that's used for the Wogglebug's other controls, but on this particular case it's been replaced with a big gray one, so that Richard Devine could do maximum manipulation of it for live performance of the creature patch. Mix and Maths are a little different. They're early designs that flow top to bottom. Maths in particular was made in the image of the quad multimode gate, or QMMG, made to be its patch pal and echoing its four-channel design with inputs at the top, outputs at the bottom, and a sum output at middle bottom. This signal flow, of course, led to something iconic. The lightning bolts flowed downward through the module, a visual representation of the various channels' connections from output attenuverters to output jacks. As a visual representation of an all-purpose voltage machine, this would prove to have legs. And Maths remains one of our most popular modules well over a decade after its original release. The iconography overall was another big part of what made this system stand out at the time. We see something like electrical signals on the faceplate of this Modumix as well. The pressure points has these back and forth lines that extend from our fingers up through the knobs and straight into the outputs. Rene, of course, is made to evoke a grid where each button itself even looks like a small grid. Phonogene uses curved lines that look like unspooled tape pouring out all over the surface of the module. The first Make Noise module I bought was the Modumix. In the original manual for Modumix, we see Tony give thanks to the electronic music pioneers who reclaimed radio communications tech for musical purposes, and then proceed to walk us through how to use the Modumix channels to invert DC offsets. I'm going to go ahead and admit that I did not understand what I was doing when I first followed these instructions. Similarly, I purchased a Maths shortly thereafter, and I read the following. Maths builds on the tradition set into motion in the 1960s by Don Buchla when he adapted the circuits found within analog computers common to engineering labs for musical purposes. Buchla's algebraic processor model 257 changed the way music synthesizers utilized control voltages. Maths, a mashup of the Buchla 281, Buchla 257, and Serge DUSG, continues this great tradition of sculpting the control signals we use to sculpt our sound signals. The manual proceeds to describe Maths' channels as being to, able to scale, invert, or integrate signals, or generate a variety of linear, logarithmic, or exponential functions. Now, I'd been playing music for my whole life when I first read this manual, and I'd even been using synthesizers for a decade or more, but when I first read this, I didn't really understand what any of this terminology meant in a musical context. This was a pretty big deal for me, because it started to take me explicitly to a place that modular synthesizers are really good at going. Somewhere below the note, somewhere where the note is not the smallest quantum unit of music. Just reading this and going through the exercises in these manuals encouraged me to search for the notes between and within the notes in a way that I really hadn't before, and to explore these places on their own merits, and not only or primarily in service of a musical goal. The musical goals came later, 
First I just needed to play for the sake of playing, and so I started to patch. <laughs> Maths and Mondumix, along with Pressure Points and Rene, started to look to me like the universal core of the Make Noise system. You could say they are the core of the early Make Noise system from 2008 to 2010. They generate, process, and shape the signals that direct the sound, even when they are not themselves creating the sound. And this is big because it means that the synth is not just a creator of sounds, but an instrument for shapes, gestures, and movements. In other words, these are tools for playing and composing music, and they direct the hands and the ears in fun ways. They become a collaborator with the musician. It wasn't until 2012 that Make Noise ventured directly into the sound generation space with its first analog VCO, the dual prismatic oscillator. Stay tuned for next time when we'll start to dig into the DPO's complex harmonic lattice.